Hi folks, so I'm sure many of you have already been made aware, but the Fedora 29 beta image has hit the shelves, and I've just been spending the last day or so uh, taking a look at it through uh, Gnome Boxes, which is basically a virtual machine program. So uh, it's a little strange doing this so soon after my Fedora 28 review, but if there's one thing that we can say about the Fedora distributions, it's that they are consistent, and they have been consistently of a very high quality since as long as I can remember and this is definitely no exception. Now bear in mind this is of course the beta, so uh, if there are any hiccups with this particular uh, review, then um, you know don't take it necessarily as uh, an example of the, the final product. But uh, yeah, having played around with it for the past couple of days, or for the past day or so, I must say that it is very much in line with the high quality that we've come to expect from Fedora. So all the good news there. And as, as of course you can see there's the new background image here. I quite like that, it's a nice, uh, nice uh, set of colors there. So I've got a few applications running up here and this is of course uh, NeoFetch so the uptime is actually a little bit longer than two minutes now. Being okay so it's one hour and two minutes. Um, but yeah as you can see the GNOME uh, 3.30 desktop, um, you, that peculiar resolution is just because I'm running this in a window. GNOME Terminal which is a pretty wonderful terminal and it is running with um, these programs which is, you know, a fair set of programs uh, with uh, memory at uh, 1434 megabytes. Now, the GNOME desktop uh, is probably the desktop that does use the most amount of memory out of all of the, the desktops that I've sort of showcased on this channel and, and plenty more. Um, however, I would say that GNOME is one of the best implementations of the um, of the GNOME desktop that uh, that we've seen. So you might need a little bit more memory uh, for, for a GNOME desktop than you would do for even something like, for example, a KDE desktop, an XFCE desktop, a Mate desktop, but, um, well, it's a very smooth experience. It's an absolutely wonderful experience. It's, um, uh, and 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 as was with with Fedora 28. In fact, I must say that this is probably not going to be a particularly exciting or lengthy review because it is just so consistent with the high quality that we've we've come to expect from this distribution. I've been having a look through the Software Center, and as with previous versions of the Software Center, we get given a choice on first boot as to whether or not we want third party. Uh, repositories and whether or not we want proprietary repositories. If we go into s uh, software here and we go to the software repositories uh, and it just loads um, loads up here. And as you can see, there are a significant number of third party repositories here, not all of which have been enabled, um, but we've got everything here from the you know, GNOME shell extensions repository. Uh, we've got the uh, Open264 repository there, firmware servicing there. Uh, there is the Google Chrome there. We've got the NVIDIA drivers there. So there's um, there are some important notes that are hit in that particular selection, which is pretty good. And then, of course, when you've got the uh, RPM Fusion repository uh, um, activated, as it does ask you on first boot, you can then start loading in things like for example, Steam, which is all pretty good there. Uh, this is the GNOME Software Center, and it's a great software center. I really am quite fond of it now. And uh, it's got all of your, um, so you can go into like, for example, games. I was actually quite taken back a little bit at the, the, the number of games here. And they're all uh, very much of, of uh, you know, different people will like obviously different games out of this selection, but there's some real gems in here. Uh, and it's got, of course, uh, you know, Red Eclipse, that's really quite good. I've shown this on the channel before. Chromium BSU, Battle of Westnos is nice. Uh, a few of you guys have been recommending Endless Sky and uh, Zero AD. Is Zero AD there? I'd be, yeah, there it is, Zero AD is right down there. So um, it's, uh, I've been playing a little bit in Neverball, but that just is such a difficult game. And it is so, ooh, Open TTD as well. That's, that's a good one, actually. I mean, Neverball is, I find very much a very frustrating game. It's very, it's like a mechanics based game, but, uh, yeah, so there's a decent selection of games there, but of course you've got Steam and uh, and uh, yeah, quite quite a lot of selection there. Uh, and also with things like, for example, I believe the Itch.io uh, client also releases its um, client as an RPM file as well. So it does. Like I've often said that Fedora does seem to fit rather nicely within the um, the home sort of or and or enterprise use. Uh, it's a very professional distribution, very consistent, but I haven't really ever sold it as a gaming distribution. So I know that many of you guys who watch my videos are big Fedora fans, and I would actually like to hear your feedback specifically about uh, from those of you that use Fedora as a gaming platform, because I must admit it is uh, it is very much becoming a distribution 
that uh, that is piquing my interest here. So anyway, let's uh, pop down the GNOME Software Center. That's uh, but yeah, GNOME. Actually, we'll just uh, we can just remove that here. Uh, and of course, I've got the Flatpak website. You go to flatpak.org forward slash setup forward slash Fedora, and you can set up Flatpak. Or well, actually, Flatpaks are supported completely out of the box. This is no exception. Um, however, you do have to activate the Flat Hub repository, which is sort of the the main. Uh, place that you would go for for your flat packs. There are of course other repositories available, but this is the the best starting point. And then you can just open up the Fedora uh, flat pack uh, file here. It downloads it. It puts it up into the GNOME thing. You click install. There we go. Authenticate. Bish bash bosh. Flat hub works. So we can even give that a bit of a spin if we just pull up the. Caden Live. And there we go. Flatpak, Caden Live, 1808.1, stable, remote flat, uh, flat hub one, and a little bit of description, video editor there. Okay, so now that we've got Flatpaks all set up, I'm just going to close the Firefox browser here, and we'll close those tabs there. And uh, it is nice just to be able to click activities, and you just get the complete spread of applications available. So there's gedit down there. I don't. Uh, I think I was just opening that up to open up some programs to give you a demonstration of memory consumption there. Uh, as was Rhythmbox. Rhythmbox is pretty good, but um, uh, for myself personally, I just tend to use more mundane um, media players and file manager side of things. Uh, this is of course the process here. So uh, now that we've removed. Uh, some of the applications here. It is now running at 1.4 gig here, uh, for 1.4 gig memory, um, and a very low CPU usage, generally speaking. Um, but of course, this is in a virtual machine, so don't take these um, statistics here as read because uh, uh, I'm still working out the ins and outs of known boxes. And here we have Evolution, and uh, if you're a fan of Evolution, um, it, then you're going to be a fan of Evolution in Fedora because it integrates with the GNOME desktop absolutely wonderfully. So uh, there we go. Um, but all things said and done, I think that's really about where I'm going to wrap it up there. This distribution doesn't really need to be any longer than that because, as with previous cases of Fedora distributions, it's of a, uh, a wonderfully high quality, a consistent quality, and... Um, and it ticks a lot of boxes, and I've got to say, I have been considering perhaps giving it a test as my daily driver. Uh, but I would like to know from you guys first, how good is it for gaming and the multimedia side of things? I must say, though, with Flatpak support, um, it you know choosing a distribution certainly becomes less of an issue. And just having Fedora and the uh, and the Red Hat company behind it as well is uh, is rather reassuring and. Uh, and it certainly piqued my interest. So I think that's about it from me today. Please leave your thoughts down in the comment section below, specifically if you've been using sort of earlier versions of Fedora as your daily driver, especially as well if you are into gaming and do a little bit of video editing, multimedia, that kind of stuff. Um, I will also put some playlists up on the end screen here that might go through some previous uh, distribution reviews and also don't forget to check out my twitch channel I've been doing a little bit of gaming over there so if you guys are into that kind of stuff um, yeah follow me on twitch so until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome take care now